welcome or oh, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Maybe never. But I'm enjoying myself and if you're enjoying watching me that makes me happy. So you will have seen today's title and hopefully you're watching me in black and white right now. Don't panic. Your machine or your phone or your PC or your TV, however you watch me, is not broken. Because hopefully I will have remembered to change this bit to black and white so you can't see how this looks. Because it is the third in my series of photo inspiration where one photo inspires two people to do two very different looks and I am delighted that the person that I am collabing with today actually contacted me. I'm old enough to be her mother but she still wants to collab with me which is awesome. To be fair, I don't think she realised I was old enough to be her mum until we got chatting. <laughs> but the lady in question is this beautiful Geordie. That was the worst Geordie accent ever, Chelsea, please forgive me. Chelsea Jane Murray. Please excuse my stomach grumbling, it wants more coffee. <coughs> you got fed, you had a bagel this morning at 7 o'clock, what are you grumbling for? Chelsea. She does some of the most beautiful, colourful looks on her Insta that I have ever seen. In fact, I commented on a look that she put up the other day saying, please tell me you filmed this, and she's, uh, no, but I can. Oh, yes, please, yes, please, yes, please. Um, I absolutely love the looks that she does. She has a very different eye shape to me, so the looks are going to be very, very different, even if we did the same look, which... Let's face it, it's highly unlikely, even though we're inspired by the same photo. She has um, much lower brows, she has much less lid space, and her eyes are very sort of very sleek and cat-like, um, very feminine. So, if you want to see exactly what I have done, what photo I chose for the two of us, to choose our colours from and just how different a 44 year old's look will be from a young lass, a young Geordie lass's look well, you're in the right place I need to go and put some coffee in my stomach to make it shut up uh, while you watch this film Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right. Uh, I'm going to put the picture up on screen here. This is the picture that Chelsea and I are going to be recreating. So, lots of blues, lots of green, and that amazing, brilliant pop of orange. Orangey red. So, here. Uh, Chelsea actually contacted me to say, did I want to collab? And I was like, you know what yeah yeah I do thank you for asking um, although my makeup is aimed at all levels it is always nice when you're nearly 45 and you get someone young enough to be your daughter message you and say did you want to collab and we, we established whilst chatting that I am exactly the same age as her mother once I have my birthday this year. So yeah. <laughs> I love Chelsea though. She does some awesome bright looks. I mean if you look through her Insta. She's just really really bright looks. She's so confident with colour. And I love to see that. I absolutely love to see that. So. The products I'm going to be using. Are. As follows. 
I am of course going to pull my Hasina 2 palette because blues and greens, hello, perfect palette for that. I know, you're thinking I'm going to get slush palette out again. I'm also going to bring out my Melt Smoke Sessions palette, trying to hold this without dazzling you with the mirror and without getting that on my chin. Because I just think the greens from this will go beautifully with the greens from this. I'm also thinking that icy green in the corner, that icy greeny blue could be a perfect in the corner highlight when I get to that stage. I know what you're thinking, but Ange, what are you going to do for the bright orangey pink? Well, I have this, you see. This is one of the Neon Dreams loose pigments from Blush Tribe. And um, this is actually called Angie. Come on, camera. There we go. Um, this is a very, very full pot. And I have used it quite a few times already to test it out. And when Salma first put this up on screen on Instagram, I was like, oh my goodness, I have to get the Angie one and then I can pretend it's named after me. Um, and it was around about the time that she'd given me my discount code for Blush Tribe. And um, she replied back, but my dear, it is. And I was like, oh, that's so sweet. Because she often names colours after some of her customers. And I just thought that was the sweetest thing. So, shall we get started? A um, little bit of housekeeping before we start. My videos are aimed at all skill levels. And when I say all skill levels, I mean all skill levels so people who've never picked up a brush before and people who are experts oh sorry i think i've got fluff up my nose from the towel um can all follow my tutorials so if you're an expert and you'll find that i'm going a little bit too slowly for you because of my chronic pain i can't go very fast uh, by all means, use the speed widget, which is either up there or down there, depending on what you're watching on, uh, and speed me up. Silicon straw, good for the environment. Reusable. Right, let's get you zoomed in. Now, when I look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. So I don't have a hooded lid. If you don't see that, you either have a full or a half hooded lid. Now, you can still follow my tutorials. All you need to do, get a flat brush like this, or a pencil brush, and just on your static lid, just draw where you need your crease line to form. Okay. I've actually got deep set eyes. If I cover my mobile lid this side and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that folds back in. So I do understand some of the trials and tribulations people with hooded eyes go through because I get transfer onto the upper lid. I can't just do a nice cut crease on my physical eyeball. I have to come up onto my static lid, otherwise it just transfers up. So. I feel you, I feel you folks, okay, I understand the pain. Right, I'm going to try something, hopefully, a little bit different today. Now, um, I'm going to be starting off with a small brush, rather than a bigger fluffy brush like I normally do. If you find this is still too big for you once you've moved your crease up, then grab something like this, which is a tapered crease brush. So it's still really loose and great for blending, but it comes right up to a point. Because whatever the width of the head, that's how far it's going to blend out to. Okay. My face has been washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. And all that I've got on my lids 
is a uh, revolution concealer and define which I have not set which is why it's starting to crease as you can see deep dry but I really want the colours to pop today so I'm going into my Hasina 2 mm. love this palette and I'm going to start off with Annika which is beautiful blue. Uh, I'm tapping off into my colour switch but I'm going to be using a clean washcloth to actually change the colours on my brush because the um, sponge in my colour switch is getting a little bit timed emotional shall we say. Right so I'm going to start off with this just on the inner corner. I'm just going to start tapping across. Coming about halfway I suppose. I'm just going to tap to build that colour up. And then I'm going to bring it down. Into the inner corner here. With my eye closed, I can't see a thing because I'm blind in this eye. So I apologise for disappearing off camera then. But I really can't see whether I'm still in shot or not. Okay. This is um, one of the Ranimal brushes that... Um, I got from AliExpress. And this is the number nine brush. They call it a contour brush for some reason. So I'm just gently building this colour up because obviously where I've not set my base, I don't want to just start twirling because it will just disappear off. So I'm just tapping very gently to build the pigment up. When it started raining outside, great, that means my white balance is going to be up and down like nobody's business. Up and down like an elevator or lift. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. So go to about there. Now with this eye, because it got pulled around a lot when I was five years old at the ophthalmic, you can see I've got very, very deep creasing there. But I will deal with that in just a moment. I just want to try and get the blue laid down nicely I do love this Asuna 2 palette I think I think actually it is my favourite palette out of all my palettes even over the Jeffree Star ones, I think this has seen a two with my favourite palette right now. People who know me and know how much I love my Jeffree Star palettes probably picking themselves up off the floor right now. But, I mean, this palette could have been made for me. It's, it's just perfect for me, it really is. Now, what I have to do, because of the deep creasing, I do have to just stretch my lid out a little bit here, otherwise I just cannot get the pigment where I want it to go, which is highly frustrating. Let's 
that even? Bring this one up a little bit. So I'm going to clean this blue off of the brush. So I'm aware I'm not talking very much. I'm really concentrating on this to try and make it look good. The, um, the neighbours had workmen in last week. And, I mean, bless them, they warned me that the workmen were coming in. So I had time to get stuff pre-filmed for uh, the week that the workmen were in. I know I couldn't do any filming. But... Um, the work took twice as long as they were expecting, so yeah, it's safe to say I had a bit of a headache by the end of the week. Right. I'm now gonna go in to Mahia, I think, which is the one of the greens. And I'm going to bring that round for this part of the eye. Just overlapping slightly in the middle there. And bringing it down. I know I say that a lot, but I really do love this palette. It's weird, I think um, Star Hollywood Jessica is about the only other YouTuber I've seen who, when she says she's used her palette a lot, and then you look at the palette and you think well, it looks bright, brand new, I'm the same because I, I keep my palettes so clean. Um, and I've noticed she's the same, and I'm just like, yay, I'm glad it's not just me that does that. So I was slightly muffed up on the corner there. I made this side pointed and this side rounded, so I'm just going to take a little bit of the... I've just got micellar water on this. Just to take some of that point away. And then come back in and make it a bit more rounded so that it matches the other eye. That's better. And again, just slightly overlapping the middle there. Oh, such beautiful colours. I never understand people that are frightened of blues and greens. I mean, I know they're, they're difficult to create, admittedly, but when you've got a formula like this that works, I mean, it's just why wouldn't you use it? It's stunning. green off of the brush. It does stain the brush a little bit. But it comes out when you wash it, so it's fine. I just try and take as much of the pigment off as possible so that if I want to use it with a different colour I can without it, you know, changing the colour that I'm putting on there. So that's cool. Now, 
Now, this is, um, is this the one that I want to use, or is this not the one that I want to use? No, that's the one that I want to use. There we go. This is another one of the Ranamore brushes. This is what they call the tapered blending brush. This is a tapered crease brush, so similar to... this one and this one they all do the same thing but you can see this one is a slightly wider tip on it um, if you've started with a more tapered one go up to something like this or something like this now And I'm just going to dip into Re. I'm very gently just going to tap that. Now, regular viewers know that I struggle here and here on both eyes to get pigment to stay. Now this re, when you put it next to a green looks blue, when you put it next to a blue looks green. I love it. So I'm just tapping it and then blending it. And I'm kind of tapping it over the edge of that green. Just to try and soften the edge and blend it up slightly. Still leaving the gap that I like to leave. But I am going to do the same thing just on the edge of this blue with the re. So I'm going to tap across very, very gentle circular movements just to soften the edge of the blue that we put down. sort of blends the, the two colours together really quite nicely. Can't wait to see what Chelsea is doing with hers. I really can't. Hmm. I love just playing with colours. Just you know, taking inspiration from a photo or a drawing, sometimes just looking at the palette and getting inspiration from the shades that are in the palette. I know that if I look at a palette and I'm seeing, you know, two, three, four, five different looks that I want to do with it, then I know that I want to buy that palette. Because obviously I want a low buy this year. I'm restricting myself to the one palette a month, so um, it is making me look more at the palettes. And there are palettes that last year I probably would have bought, but um, I haven't done this so far this year. Well, there are a couple of revolution ones that are tempting me at the moment. But um, with Brexit coming up at the end of March, God help us, um, there was a palette that I wanted to order which hasn't come to the UK yet, but it is in Europe. And there's a German site that I got this Catrice um, mascara from that Nikki Raven recommended. And it is an absolute dupe for Bad Girl Bang, but it's waterproof and it's cheaper. Um, so I've ordered, or I will be ordering on Monday when I get paid, uh, 
two more mascaras because my mascaras usually last me three to four months that should do me for a year then um, and I'll, I'm going to be ordering three more of the really really fine micro pencils as well for my brow the, 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 the main and some more eyelash glue because the essence of eyelash glue is pretty much the only one that I can use that doesn't really sort of affect my eyes. I can sometimes get away with duo but not always. Um, the Essence um, Lash Glue is by far for me the best anyway. It doesn't make my eyes stream or irritate them or anything. Uh, it's actually quite a good lash glue. The lashes do stay on. Because I've got very watery eyes just here and here which is one of the issues of fibro unfortunately. Um, and a lot of lashes I find I have trouble either getting them to stick here and if they stick then they start peeling up through the night but the Essence, essence Lash Glue is really good for that Hmm, I like this Do I want to deepen things up a bit? Yes, I think I do I'm taking the colour off of this brush as much off as I can because obviously the greeny blue pigments do stay unfortunately. And I am going to pick up one of the flat brushes. Should I do a cut crease? Should I just pop them on? No, I think I'll just pop them on. Right, I'm going to be using um, I'm going to be putting the shimmer onto the brush and then applying it to my eye um, after I've wet it. I'm not going to put the wet brush into a pressed pigment because that seals it over when you get a hard pan. You can use anything you like to wet your brush with. You can use a priming spray, you can use a moisturising spray like Fix Plus, Mario Badescu, Super Drug Vitamin E spray that I put up on Instagram the other day. Um, I'm going to be using today the iHeart Revolution Fixing Spray in Vanilla and Coconut because, well, why not? So I'm going to start off by picking up some Minor, which is very nearly my late mother's name. Onto the brush there. I'm just going to wet the brush and then I always make a point of just wiping any excess off with a ferrule so you don't get any moisture going down and loosening the bristles of the brush. Right, I'm going to grab myself a little mirror so I can see what I'm doing up close. And I'm just going to pop this onto the inner half of my eye. And you can see it's such a pretty, pretty shimmer, this one. So pretty, so pretty. Right. And I'm going to clean the brush off. Make sure it's absolutely dry, which it is. And then I'm going to go into... Do I want to go into that one? I don't want to go into one of the greens from here. actually very similar. Oh, but different when swatched. Right, so that's from Hasina, that's from Smoke Sessions. I think the Hasina one looks more green, whereas the Smoke Sessions one has more of a uh, black undertone to it. So I will go in with Shay from Hasina. Pack that on. And then spritz the brush. Dry the ferrule and apply this to 
the middle part of my lid and then kind of going along my lash line to the edge and then sort of going at an angle up to there so you can still see this beautiful bright green on the edge Ooh, I like that I like that a lot and then what I'm going to do I'm going to flip the brush over to the side that hasn't got any pigment on it and I'm going to gently drag the blue across onto the green and the green across onto the blue and back again just until I've softened where the two colours meet. I might pick a little bit more of that blue up actually. There. Ooh, I like that. I know what you're thinking. Where are you going to put the orange? You'll see. Of course I have yet to know whether this technique that I'm going to do is actually going to work for the orange because it's the first time I've tried it. But, you know, do something every day that scares you. If you're going to try out a new thing, why not try it on camera? So if you fail, it can be seen by everybody. Right, now with this one, I do have to stretch my lid out, otherwise the shimmer kind of skips over those deep creases. And as it dries through the day, I get a lot of fallout. So I hate having to stretch my lid like this and do not do this unless you already have super super deep creasing like I do. Otherwise you will end up with super super deep creasing. And I can promise you those creases only get worse over the years. They do not get any better. Okay. Blue off of the brush. Go into shade. And start to pop this on. Again, follow it along the lash line and then kind of come off the diagonal or Diagon Alley for the Harry Potter fans amongst us. Which house would you be in if you were sorted? What do you think? Which house do you think I'd be in? That's a good question. So in the description box below, I'm just picking a little bit more of that blue just to blend the two colours together. In the, in the comments box below, if you're into Harry Potter, let me know what house you'd be in. And also what house you think I'd be in. It could be interesting. Right, now here comes the point where I'm about to try a technique I have never done before. So, wish me luck. Please. Right, I'm going to use this very, very fine pencil brush. And I'm going to go in with the L'Oreal More Than Concealer, their new infallible one in porcelain. I'm just going to pick some of that off of the dough foot, a white majority of the dough foot off on the thing. And then I'm going to very carefully.
try and draw. A line. Through the blue and green. As I said, never tried this before. Could go very badly wrong. This is my concentration face. What do we think? Yeah? Like you can answer me. Please answer me. <laughs> I haven't got my setup ready to to go live or anything, so well, I think this camera is Wi-Fi enabled. Alright, so I need to go to there to start it with. It needs to come up to there, then down to there, and then up off the corner. Because I don't trust myself to get this even. with this eye I can actually close the eye while I'm doing it. This is definitely not anything I'm already comfortable with doing at all. I've seen other people do this. But they've normally got 20 year old eyelids so I don't have the kind of creasing and creeping that I have to deal with. You could see me right now, I'm sitting here with my tongue out slightly. We all know that aids concentration, right? This is a bit like doing a wing liner. I've done one side thicker than the other. I'm going to have to finish thicken it up this side, aren't I? Talk about having an Amy Winehouse moment. Have you ever done that? Put your liner on and then do the other side and it's a bit thick so you have to go back and thicken the other side up and before you know it, you're reliving your goth years. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. That was ridiculously scary to do. Why on earth was that so scary? Alright, 
right, I'm just going to clean the concealer off of this. Because now comes an equally scary moment. I'm opening the Angie pigment. And I'm standing it down on a solid surface very quickly. You watch me knock this lot all over the show now. Right. Now because the Angie pigment is a loose pigment, I can wet my brush. So I'm going to absolutely soak the mofo. And then dry the ferrule off really, really well. And uh, dip in to said pigment. Oh, crikey, blow me. I'm just going to tap off in the lid. Oh, wish me luck, folks. And I'm going to very carefully... Do you know what? I think I'm going to get my small mirror up so I can see what I'm doing closer. I'm going to very carefully pop this pigment onto the concealer. If I can work out in post-production how to speed this bit up, I probably will do. Because um, I'm aware it's not that scintillating to watch. Oh, I didn't tap off and now I've got a fallout. And I'm just going to squirt some spray into there. And I'm going to pick up some of this pigment, dollop it in, and try and make a nice neon paste out of it. I think I might put too much liquid in. That's any easier. <sighs> yes. It's much easier, folks. So, if you're going to be using a brush this fine. Mix it to a paste first.
You watch me completely muck up this side. Sorry, I'm aware I'm not talking and I'm breathing quite heavily, but this is taking a lot of concentration for an old bird like me. But I'm quite enjoying the look. Worth the mental anguish. Phew. What do we think? Do you like? we not like? I think I like. I think I like quite a bit actually. Right, I am going to pop off of camera and do my foundation and whatnot and I will be back to finish off this eye look. Wow, I'm actually really quite liking this. Mm experiment. Right, back in a moment. Okay, I am back. Right, I'm going to go into the Smoke Sessions palette and I'm going to be using this flat top brush and I'm going to go into one of the only two mattes in this palette. I'm going to go into Space Queen, which is the super, super dark green. I'm just going to pop this right tight up under my bottom lashes here. Because where I've got such sensitive eyes, if I put anything in my waterline, it just ends up irritating my eyes. They start streaming and I either end up with it coming down my face or whatever colour I've used it ends up in that coloured boogie in the middle of my eye, which is not attractive. I'm going to do the same this side. Yes, I'm flinching. I don't have any peripheral vision, so I'm relying on muscle memory and my viewfinder to not poke myself in the face. And regular viewers will know that doesn't always uh, work out. And then I have another flat top brush here, but it's much, much thicker. And I'm going to go into Mean Green, which is the other one of the dark greens that I swatched earlier with a, more of a, a black undertone to it. And I'm just going to smudge that all the way along. Because some of those trees got very, very dark, so this is the the dark tree line, so to speak. It also helps to pick up on the darker shimmer that I've used there. And again, on this side. Oh, I do love this session, this smoke sessions palette. So gutted when it arrived broken. But Melt were very good. They, uh, they refunded me after they saw the photos and how bad it was. And thankfully I managed to squish most of the shadows back into the right places. So I can still use it, but obviously, you know, I've got no I, I, I've got no way of knowing now where I repress them, whether they're actually performing the way Melt shadows would perform or not. 
Saham. Now, this is one of the little, looks like it should be a Jeffrey, but I got it from AliExpress brush. And I'm going to go into Blue Dream. This is the, the shade in this palette that was the most smushed. I'm going to pop some of that. I think this brush might be a little bit too stiff actually. Put a softer one here. I'll try this one. Again, just a little mini flat top brush. And it's just slightly, yeah, I picked it up much better. I'm going to pop that on the inner corner and just drag it down to meet the deeper part, I've just found with my eyes, my eye shape, just lightening up, not just the inner corner, but that little tiny bit under my tear duct, really does help brighten the eyes and sort of widen them up a bit. You know what, I'm really happy with the way this is actually turning out. I was a little bit nervous when I started. You could probably tell. Right, now, I'm going to go in with a Colourpop Super Shock Cheek Shadow. This is in shade Perilloon. Which I hope you can see has actually got a green shift to it. Now these are very much cream to powder, but for some reason you can use them if you've powdered without it completely buggering up your base, which is good. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of that just up under the tail of my brow, both sides. Super pretty. I always do my... Um, highlight before I do my mascara because I don't want to get highlight sticking to the mascara if that makes any sense while the mascara is too wet. So let's zoom you out a little bit. Hello! Right. Now, what sort of brush? I think I'll go for this one. This is actually a revolution brush. The F103, so you can see it's duo fibre. And I'm just going to swirl that in this and very gently run it down. This gives a much softer look, as you can see, because the lighter duo fibres really help sort of fluff the colour out. I don't know what you're thinking, but you don't normally like the colour fluffed out. No, but this is a completely different formula, don't forget, this is not powder, this is cream to powder. And I just find that using one of these dual fibre brushes just helps it disperse beautifully over your base without disrupting what you've put down because obviously I do have to set my foundations because I have oily combo skin and if I don't I won't have any foundation in an hour. I do like these Super Shock. I started off with the Super Shock shadows which is actually quite difficult to say. Um, and I've got a drawer full of those. I still need to film with them. I still need to film with a lot of things that I've got, to be honest. This is why I want to lay by this year, because I'm just, I've got so much makeup. Um, and it's also, it's making me think more about what do I actually want to buy. I want the new Anastasia palette. I've told hubby that can be my anniversary present in April, because we've been married for five years this April. Yes, I'm really, really buffing this into my skin because 
because of the, the formula that this is, where it is cream to powder, the more you buff it into your skin, the the, the better the effect for me because it, it just looks wet on your cheek. Um, and I love that look for a highlighter, I really, really do. So, as you can see, pretty, 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 pretty. Okay. The only colour I haven't really used is that soft pink, isn't it? Although I have got a pink blush on, so maybe I'll put a pink lippy on. What do we think? Yeah. Perhaps I'll do a pink lippy. Right, I'm going to go off camera and put some mascara and some lippy on and do something with my hair because, you know, you all know how to put mascara on. You don't need me to show you that. Um, but just so you know which one I'm using, I am going to be going in with this Catrice Glam and Doll Volume Mascara Waterproof. Cannot thank Nikki Raven enough for telling me about this. Danke wohl, Nikki, danke wohl. This is by far the best mascara I have ever used. This is a bang on dupe for Benefits Bad Gal Bang. But it's four euros from the German site that I buy it from. Which is why I'm doing a rather large order when I get paid on Monday. So that I've got enough to see me through for a year just in case Brexit buggers up me ordering from there. But yes, this is the mascara I'm going to be using. Be right back. There we go. I used uh, Jeffrey's Thirst Trap from his Summer 2018 collection, which gives this beautiful sort of metallic -y pink to represent the pink clouds, which I had completely forgotten about because I was so excited about using that beautiful neon pigment. So, here's my final look. What do you think? Apart from the fact that my hair's going mad. Um, how do you think I did? Would you have done it like this or would you have done it differently? If you have an Instagram and you want to try recreating a look with this, please tag me in it after you've done it because I would love, love, love to see what you've done. And uh, I can't wait to see how Chelsea's done hers because we have very, very different eye shapes. She's got much lower, um, more elongated, almost cat-like eyes. So I'm really, really excited to see what she's done uh, and which palettes she's used. Because when I was watching, um, she contacted me saying, would you like to collab? And I'm like, yes, fabulous. I've been watching her for quite a while, loved the stuff she was doing. Just never thought someone in a, you know that young would want to collaborate with someone as old as me, to be quite honest. So that was really, really, really sweet of her. Um, and I'd said to her, look, the um, collab that I did, the first collab that I did on this series with Nikki Raven had just gone up. And I said, look, um, have a look at that. Tell me if you're interested in doing something like that. I said, and, you know, and she came back to me, oh my goodness, yes, please, that'd be awesome. I said, right, fantastic. But I was aware that a lot of, the, although I'd seen her do colourful looks on Insta, a lot of the videos that she'd done, she was doing like Revolution Palace, and we all know how many browns there are in those. Um, especially the ones that came out at Christmas, like the salted caramel and you know, chocolate cherry or whatever it was. So uh, she um, she mentioned in one of her videos that she was thinking about doing a these are all my palettes, and I'm like, yes, do that so I can see what palettes you've got, and then that will help me decide which photo to send across. Because the last thing I want to do is send her a photo across, and she she go, oh crap, I haven't got. I'm gonna have to go out and buy something to be able to do that. I don't want that. I want her to be able to use what she's already got but maybe in a different way and combining them in different ways to produce a look. So um, that's why the um, the second one of these, my collab with Star Hollywood Jessica, went up first um, because I was waiting to see Chelsea's This Is My Makeup Collection before I sent the, the picture across. So. Oh, okay, this foundation is definitely <clears throat> a little bit too dark. I'm kind of oompa loompa right now. 
I feel like I should have like a turtleneck on or something, but then I have a very short neck and turtlenecks just look awful on me. Um, thankfully I haven't got a go anywhere today. Whew. But, okay, this is the look that I created. Um, let me know what you think, how well do you think I did? And if you have a YouTube channel and you want to be part of my collab series, then uh, send me a message on Insta or Twitter and uh, yeah, we'll see what we can sort out. Right, that's it. That's the lot. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it fun. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could hit that like button for me. Comment, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, don't forget to ring my bell. Ring my bell choose all notifications so that you get told every time that I upload another one of these films. And do, do please check, even if you are a regular super subscriber and you've been subscribed for ages, please check because I've had a lot of people say to me, I was subscribed to you and you were still coming up in my news feed but I suddenly realised that I wasn't subscribed anymore. So I'm like, oh YouTube are really not helpful. Um, I actually had that. I got unsubscribed from about five channels last week and it's channels that I have not missed a single film that they've put out. So being a regular viewer doesn't necessarily mean you're going to stay subscribed. YouTube really are not being nice to smaller subscribers right now. I mean, they could be doing it to larger subscribers as well, but when you've got a couple of million uh, subs, you probably don't notice when you lose half a dozen here or there. Anyway, talking of other films, I do have an awful lot for you to choose from. But, before you check out any of mine, I want you to pop over, say hi to Chelsea, and uh, see what look she's done. And if you've come here from Chelsea's channel, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed the blethering of this slightly older woman, who's ever so slightly crazy, but thoroughly enjoys being so. Uh, once you've checked out uh, Chelsea's film, as always, my beautiful sisters in the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group are listed in my channel below and they have produced some pretty epic films just recently. Have you seen them? Tell me, have you seen them? If not, please go and check them out. Right, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is your stay fabulous. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.